Hello guys, it's D to the B, and this message is going to show up in my videos from now on. Please check if you are subscribed, because YouTube has been automatically unsubscribing people from certain channels, which this has even happened to me. My friend Alex and I were talking like two months ago, and he said that he was automatically unsubscribed by YouTube without him even knowing. So if you're a supporter, please check if you're still subscribed. You never know what could happen. And if you're not, and you like today's video, please subscribe. And enjoy the video. <laughs> It's D to the B here with the reviews of episode 2 and episode 3 of season 2 of The Mandalorian. Sorry I did not make this video soon enough. I've been extremely busy lately, so I decided to make two separate reviews into one video. And I am most likely going to do this with the rest of season 2. But now... Let's get into the review of episode 2. Episode 2 was meh. There were good parts about the episode, but I wouldn't say the complete episode is perfect. As the majority of fans know, Mando returns from his mission from episode 1 with Boba Fett's armor and meets up with the lady from episode 5 of season 1 of The Mandalorian. And she is having this bid with this ant-type alien. Which the ant conveniently knows where a group of Mandalorians are. And during this trip to find these Mandalorians, Mando also has to take this frog lady to get her eggs back to her husband so they can be fertilized. But they can't go into light speed because it would kill the eggs. Or they would be flying all the way to the planet which eventually would have them crash on a snow planet, which turns out to be the very snow planet from episode one of The Mandalorian. And, of course, we all know about the situation with Baby Yoda eating some unfertilized eggs and people on Twitter freaking out about it, which I have to say, you're being a bit dramatic. Like, sure, you can be upset about it, but... It's not worth getting this character cancelled or the Mandalorian cancelled. It's not worth it. But, yeah, all I have to say is, I'm glad I don't have Twitter. Then eventually, Mando gets approached by two Republic fighters. The chase results them crashing and... Them trapped in a cave of ice with creepy spiders. Which it takes them a while to fix the ship because it's so damaged. Which, to be honest, I'm surprised they even made it out of there. But, plot armor. And they escape eventually with the help of the Rebellion fighters or the Republic. And they manage to get out of the ice cave even though their ship is damaged. And I'm not talking about the Republic fighters, I'm of course talking about the Razor Crest. Which, yeah, there isn't much to this episode. Now, let's get to the next episode. So episode 3, they managed to get to the planet that the frog lady needed to be to meet up with her husband. Which they found him very quickly. And then... Mando starts asking the husband where people like him are, which the frog man sends him to a bar, which conveniently they know where the Mandalorians he's looking for are. And they go on a boat, and of course, Mando gets betrayed by these people. So then... We get to see the Mandalorians that the Frogman was talking about. And it's not just any Mandalorians, or should I say Mandalorian, it's none other than 
Bo-Katan from Star Wars The Clone Wars, which also led to another situation on Twitter, but I'm not gonna talk about that one. But let's get back to the review. After Bo-Katan, Ender Group saves Mando and the child. Mando thanks Bo-Katan before she takes off her helmet, and then Mando's like, Whoa, you ain't a Mandalorian. Which Bo-Katan would say that she even grew up on the planet Mandalore itself. Which this scene, we get to know more about um, the purge of the Mandalorians and the helmet rule with the Mandalorians as well. But Mando is more convinced with the rules he grew up with when Death Watch was around. After that, Bo-Katan and her crew blow up the boat to wipe any evidence of their fiasco, which Mando gets confronted by the captain's brother, which, again, Bo-Katan saves his life, and then she offers to take him for a drink. Before I continue on, I just have to mention the live-action Bo-Katan look, it looks amazing. Like, it actually looks like the character. And conveniently, it's the same actress from The Clone Wars. Just wanted to throw that in there. Anyway, let's get back to the review. Bo-Katan mentions to Mando in the bar that they're gonna hop on into an Imperial shuttle containing weapons. Which Mando only agrees because Bo-Katan knows a Jedi. Which, by the way, is what Mando is looking for. And decides to join her and her crew for this mission. And Mando and Bo-Katan and her crew start blasting up the stormtroopers. Which creates my favorite moment from that episode where the commander of the transport ship talks to Moff Gideon, and Moff Gideon says, Long live the Empire. And the commander kills his troops. Eventually, Bo-Katan gets all the weapons and gets to the commander and asks him, Where is he? With the Darksaber. It was something like that. I know it's not exactly what she said. But before she could find out, he kills himself with an electric pill. Kind of similar to what, like, the Nazis did. And Mando decides to leave after that to get Baby Yoda. But he asks Bo-Katan who the Jedi is and where they need to go. Which is, of course... The great Jedi from the Clone Wars that many fans like, Ahsoka Tano. Which is nothing really that shocking because we got a list of characters that were going to show up. And pretty much every single character so far has shown up or is going to show up. We got Boba Fett in Episode 1. We got Bo-Katan in episode 3, and we're most likely going to see Ahsoka in episode 4 or 5. I don't know. And that's how the episode ends. And this one I really did kind of like. This was a pretty good one. Hopefully the Mandalorian can keep track still. Like, the last episode was meh, but... It kind of felt like the Mandalorian was falling apart. Hopefully, they can keep it going and continue on with the plot. Because I really don't want this show to fall apart. I did kind of like the first season. Of course, there were some filler episodes. But what show doesn't have those, unfortunately? I'm just really hoping that they can keep this on track. But... Time will only tell. See you two Fridays later. Have a nice day.